Hey there guys, what's going on? So it's time for another review of sorts here on my YouTube channel, updated and flawed looking as it may be now. Thanks a lot, YouTube. Anyway, there's always plenty of things on the to-do list to be talking about, but as we get ready to tackle more of that, I thought today I should take a little bit of a sidetrack here just to talk about a few things that recently captured the attention of my perked up ears. As I am occasionally prone to do here, I'll often take small bands or solo artists that I find interesting, talk them up a little, and present the best possible information and review for those of you out there who might be interested in something fresh and attention-grabbing. And today is certainly no exception to that rule, as I've chosen a band and a solo artist to feature here, one of which has somewhat prominent members, while the other just basically came out of nowhere with a blazing flash of incredible talent. Sound intriguing yet? Well, it's about to get better. First up, we have the band, called Split Single. Now, this is a project I've been keeping up with for a while now, ever since lead singer-songwriter Jason Narducci mentioned that it had been put together. Now, I know Jason best from his time as the current incredible bassist and backing vocalist in the Bob Mould Band, and I was pleased to see that he was being joined by the thunderous John Worcester, also of the Bob Mould Band, on drums. Of course, these two have also been in other notable groups, like Verbo in Jason's case, and the Mountain Goats and Super Chunk in the case of John, but... That's not all. They're also joined on this forthcoming record by Britt Daniel of Spoon on bass, who also has another side project of his own currently going with a band called Divine Fits. So, as you can see, this is a pretty interesting trio here, even if Split Single hasn't exactly received anything at all in the way of attention. However, that may start to change a little bit beginning today, since three of the final songs from this record emerged courtesy of the band's SoundCloud page, which I will link up to in the box down there below. As always, I'm never sure what to expect when I take a step into something new musically, but in terms of Fragmented World, Waiting for the Sun, and Last Goodbye, I immediately like the friendly, familiar nature of what I encountered. Leading off with Fragmented World, we immediately encounter a blend of ingratiating pop rock that not only makes sense considering Jason's musical background, but also coincides quite well with what he's currently doing in the Bob Mould Band, albeit with a little less throaty punch. But we by the hook of Monday, Tuesday, I'm fine, just all alright, Thursday, Friday, I'm dying, Fragmented World almost resembles a snappy call to attention in the mold of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Just a quick burst at a minute 56 seconds in length, but enough to keep the repeat button very hard at work. Next we have Waiting for the Sun, which takes something that starts off resembling a Sound of the Rainforest tape and blends it into the thumping groove of a haunted, pulsing background, adds a touch of strings, and finishes with a burst of foot-tapping electric strums and yet another durable hook. The build-up is superb to the point that it feels spacious within the recording, and Jason's vocal style is as ever one that works well, whether he's backing the bulldog thrash of Bob Mould's sound, or scaling it back to lend a smoothly comfortable exterior. Lastly, we end the set with Last Goodbye, which, if anything, may just be the finest song with the bunch. Lending a more hearty dosage of string textures and a strong mid-tempo rock pacing, it sounds like something you might have heard a decade or two ago on the radio, when radio was still somewhat entertaining. Its dreamy glow is a fine way to end the preview of these songs, where the lyrics pop off the page and feel immediately memorable, which is always a highly positive sign in my book. I mean, if I can start humming a song I've only heard once or twice and find that certain parts reappear in my head later, usually that indicates that it's pretty good, and I think you'll think so as well. Now, on the other side of the coin here, we have somebody entirely new and independent, who I only happened to stumble on last night and was immediately taken with. His name is Andrew Williams, and thanks to my Tumblr music page, I was able to find his SoundCloud as well, which I will link to in the same spot, of course. He is known as New Every Morning Music, and on the page I'm linking to, you'll find a great selection of the covers he does, which are my personal favorites. You can also find stuff for original material and a band through his Tumblr page, but this is what I wanted to talk about because, wow. Not only does he do covers, he honors them faithfully while adding his own beautiful spin through gorgeous falsetto or extra harmonies or downright special piano playing. I started with his version of The Tallest Man on Earth's Kids on the Run, which takes the beauty of that song and makes it more accessible without Christian Madsen's scratched up barbed wire vocals, which can certainly be a rather acquired taste for some. He also throws older stuff in, like a ukulele duet of the Beatles' I'll Follow the Sun, Cat Stevens' Wild World, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash's Helplessly Hoping, but my favorites are still probably the contemporary stuff. Andrew seems to have an affinity for Bonifar in particular, and anyone who knows Justin Vernon knows just how hard it is to do his songs justice. But whether it's Beth Rest, Beach Baby, Stax, or Holocene, this guy's a knack for not only being capable, but being talented enough to define these songs for himself. In some ways, he's got to sound much like Justin Vernon, with a mixture of Zach Condon from Beirut at times, along with other voices I haven't quite defined yet. 
Either way, it's hard to properly state in words just how I was so immediately impressed with what Andrew Williams can do. From Radiohead to Gregory Allen Isaacoff to Andrew Bird to Paul McCartney to Beach House and a bit of everything in between, Andrew Williams is definitely one to watch. Just another reason why the internet is such an excellent place, because the deeper you go, the more likely you are to find those talents that haven't been seen by the light of day, let alone record labels or major radio play. What an age we live in allowed by blessed technology, at least in this case. My review of this split single and Andrew Williams coverage can't really be stated with a number, just the fact that I'm really impressed with each. Whether you like hook-friendly rock or piano suites, these are two different types of music that will definitely keep me coming back, and I hope the same might apply for some of you as well. This video was very much a spur-of-the-moment, last-minute idea kind of thing, and despite that, I think it came out very well and was very necessary to make. New enlightenment has been passed along to thee. So that's it, and that is all for me and my coverage of new stuff from Jason Narducci's band Split Single, and the stuff I really never noticed until now from Andrew Williams. I can't recommend either with enough interest, and as I said, I will include links to both SoundCloud pages down there below. I'm sure you can gain more info as well from Jason Narducci's Twitter page or Andrew Williams' Tumblr blog, and happy hunting in that regard if you choose to do so. Until next time, though, ladies, gentlemen, other creatures who possess thumbs and a love for cat videos, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon.